Welcome to Wild Things. I'm Miss Holly. Ready to hit the trail? Me too. Let's go. We're exploring the trails around Lake Patton today here on the ancestral and unceded territory of our Coast Salish peoples. How lucky are we? We're going to talk about spider anatomy and what's different between a spider and an insect, all close up and personal. So if you have your paper out and a pen, I'm going to draw, you can draw with me, an insect. Here's the head, here's the thorax, here's their abdomen. Antenna, of course, go on the head. Boop. Boop. And the legs go where insect has a lot of muscle. So that's in the thorax. And they're an arthropod, so I'm gonna draw them with jointed legs. Doot, 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 doot. Doot, doot. Insects have very fancy eyes, they're called compound eyes, and I'm going to draw this one on the side of the head, like that. All right. Some insects have a stinger, some insects have wings, but not all do. I'm going to leave the wings off this insect for now. So head, thorax, and abdomen. Where do you feel hungry? Same place as a insect, right there in their abdomen. So spiders are like an insect and they have a, a crunchy shell of an exoskeleton. So that's very similar to an insect. Here's the head and thorax. So it's kind of like these two together made a spider. And here's, I'm gonna draw a female spider with a big abdomen because maybe there are babies getting worked on right there. Okay, so where are the legs coming out? Same as an insect inside the thorax, but this is called a cephalothorax. So we'll pretend it's this whole part of the insect. You know, I just messed up my drawing. Ready? How many legs? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Different than an insect. Okay, now how many eyes? Hmm. They can have zero to eight. If you don't need eyes, if you live in a cave, you don't need eyes. But if you have, um, if you have to jump on your prey in order to eat it, you would have big eyes that actually can see more color than humans, like a jumping spider. Let's pretend this one only has six eyes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they have some jaws right here called chelicerae. Well, they'd be right here, actually. And then these would be like, um, Pedipalps, which are kind of like a helper. They hold things together. And if you're a male spider, you, that would be the way that you would know it's a male spider by looking really closely at those pedipalps, getting really close because they look like little boxing gloves. All right, and this is the abdomen where all the digestion and reproductive parts are. And right here on the underside is where the spider silk comes out. Okay, I have a picture here of some arthropods. Arthropods have shells and jointed legs. Um, and the question I have for you is, which one's a real, true spider? So, are you ready? Let's look. Hmm, is it this one, the spider? One, two, three, four, five, six, six legs. They come out of a thorax, but their head is separate and they have this whole big abdomen. And it has wings. Hmm. Maybe not a spider. We look at this one. Wait, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one has eight legs. Is this a true spider? No, this is a daddy long legs, a harvestman it's called also. But if you look really close right here, they only have one body part. They have a couple tiny little eyes on top, but really, they don't eat the same way. They don't have venom like a spider does. They eat lots of rotten things on the ground. They love leaf litter. They are not a true spider. Are they cousins? Yes. 
in the way that a butterfly is a cousin to a beetle, right? They're related, but they're not the same. So this one, is, those are both insects, right? This is a true spider. Let's count the legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, look, there's the head part. Remember the head and the thorax together? That's the cephalothorax. So they have one body part, two body parts. Mm -hmm. That's our true spider right there. That one, not so much. Looks just like it though. So tricky. Look, we found a web. You can kind of see the structure of the web just by all the fur needles in it. But we like to use a handy tool called Super Secret Spider Spray. Any spray bottle that has a gentle mist will work. And the point is not to spray the spider to kill it. What you're really going to do is illuminate the web. Because the, did you know that spiders need water too? But look how Super Secret Spider Spray shows you the structure of the web. This is a sheet web, not an orb web. And I'm going to touch it to see if there's any sticky parts. Are you ready? Hmm. My fingers are getting wet, but they're not sticking to this silk. What this, this web was woven by an orb weaver. See how it looks like a wheel? And it has spokes. And we just were like the morning dew fairy and put water on her web. She will come back. Let's see if there are sticky parts to this web. So I'm touching the in-between parts. Oh, that stuck to my finger. Did you see that? Totally. Now let me touch the one of the braces, like the spokes. Right here. Where it's attached and it forms those. Oh, not sticky at all. What if I touch the middle? See how it's all open? That's not sticky at all. Spiders make different kinds of silk. Because she's an orb weaver, she's hoping that the insect will land right in there. And she also feels the vibration of the web, just like this one right here. Look at that. There's a sheet web weaver right there. Beautiful. That one looks like a bowl. Lots of times they look like domes when I spray them. But it's important to have the sticky parts on the round so that it catches an insect. Right? The sheet web, it sort of gets confused and just stuck in the web with, by sheer volume of silk. But this one, she uses her stickiness to capture her insect prey. Grabs it, bites it, puts her venom in. The venom will, is like a digestive enzymes and will turn the inside of the insect into squish. We call it bug soup. And then she'll suck it right up. She doesn't have teeth. They have kind of jaws, the chelicerae are kind of like a jaw, but they just hold things. They don't chew, really. There's a good one. Look at that. There's a funnel right into there. You see these a lot, and especially our big corky bark crevice trees like our Douglas fir. Look at that funnel. So we found funnel webs today, sheet webs today and orb webs today. So look at that sheet web. Look, does it look like a bowl? Sometimes they look like a dome, right? Um, the question is, do all spiders make webs? And from what I've read, not all spiders make webs. All spiders make silk. That's kind of one of the things that makes spiders super special. But not all spiders build a web. Oh, that one's still in there, yay. Look at that beautiful dome. And some spiders, I mean, they both seem like they would be solo, but there are some that are kind of communal, live in a community, which is a little like, how do you do that without eating each other? But sometimes they do.
sprayed water on her. She's scooted right up there. She's hiding right there, waiting for us to like, go away. Look at that, long strands. So I think what I appreciate about spiders so much is how beautiful, especially um, uh, spiders themselves used to freak me out quite a bit, but I was so amazed by the beautiful symmetry of orb webs that I sort of got fascinated with like, how do they make those perfect every time? Clearly this one's had some stuff in there, or maybe it's a brand new beginner and it's not quite perfect yet, but the beautiful symmetry was so incredible. Even when I was a student at college, I wanted to capture a spider web and put it on like black velvet and frame it because that's how I do things. But it was so beautiful. Oh yeah, look how sticky that is. And I can still move that around, it's flexible. But it's the inside spokes that are sticky. Isn't that amazing they can use? They have different kinds of web for different kinds of functions. And in an ecosystem, a spider's function is like their job, right? So their job is to kind of crowd control for insects. They're huge predators of insects that would take over the world otherwise. <laughs> so they're kind of one of those stop measures for that. They eat primarily insects, especially ours over here. They do not want to bite humans. You're too big. They can't get their little fangs into your skin very often. We have two poisonous wash, um, spiders in Washington. One's a brown recluse and that likes wood piles and one's a black widow spider which also likes wood piles. So in the forest we have most of the ones that just only eat insects. They're an important predator. But this silk is so cool. Did you know that spider silk is stronger than steel? You can really feel it here when I'm touching. This is one of her um, support ones. And there's a really good description in the Eric Carle book of um, the very busy spider of how they actually make them. And there's some videos in the links below that you can click on to watch a spider do. And if you ever have the opportunity to watch an orb weaver do her work, it's amazing. And how they start just doesn't seem like it would be, but it's so strong, it's stronger than steel. So if we put a whole bunch of spider silk together in a rope, the same size as a steel cable, it would be stronger than a steel cable. The cool thing about the silk is that it's liquid when it comes out and they have these little spinnerets on their abdomen which kind of form which ones and they look like little fingers working. It's super neat and it's liquid when it comes out. As soon as it hits the air it turns solid. It's a protein I guess and so if she's, this is damaged she, the spider will eat all of the silk and then re-spin the whole thing in by morning. Oh, yeah.